Hello everyone, welcome back to the Britannica YouTube channel. Uh, we are playing Old School Essentials uh, in the Dolmenwood campaign setting, and uh, I am your host, John. I'm also the referee of the game. And going around the horn once again, we have Mike playing Alfric the magic user, uh, David playing Snell the hunter, and Matt playing Halifax Swinney the knight. Uh, tonight we are missing our redoubtable fighter Argus. Uh, Ted is away and of course as usual he is dead to us for deciding to find something else to do on game night. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who would do that. It's a terrible thing. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, yeah, so before we get going, as we dive back right into the middle of uh, the uh, the, ram the consequences of, uh, of a frantic combat from last time, I just wanted to point out to everybody that um, as of the recording of this video, episode 10, um, there, it, uh, uh, Necrotic Gnome and Exalted Funeral are doing a Kickstarter on, that is launching on Wednesday, which is February the 23rd in the common year 2022 and uh, it's going to be for the two box sets for old school essentials so they're going to be reissuing the classic fantasy box set and also the advanced expansion set uh, all with new artwork and uh, modular tomes and all that sort of good stuff so uh, if you head over to necroticgnome.com or exaltedfuneral.com you can get notified for when the kickstarter goes live and for those uh, who are day one backers apparently you get an exclusive t-shirt and uh, a free issue of the soon to come out um, soon to be released carcass crawler issue number Number two, the old school essentials official zine. So it's pretty sweet for day one backers. So uh, yeah, just uh, take take a look at that if you if you are so uh, inclined. So we let's dive right back into it, guys. Um, last we left our intrepid adventurers, and Alfred just sort of wanders in through the wormhole, I guess, <laughs> Follow, following the noises of this dress. Um, the um, what's up, guys? <laughs> I followed the slime trails. Why is he unconscious again? Hey guys, <laughs> what's going on? Um, oh, Efric, what is your uh, your alignment? First off, uh, I am neutral. Really? Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, you guys are in this. Uh, get my map out here so I can correctly describe it here. Uh, you're in a 15 by... You, you guys were also making maps, right, David and Matt? Yeah. You do have you have a piece of scrap paper? Good. All right. You should continue doing that since you don't have uh, Ted with you. Um, you're in a 15 by 15 square foot chamber, and to the south there are stairways that are going up. You are currently basically huddled on that staircase that you assume, because of the granite block that is at the top of those stairways, is the actual granite block that leads that um, is the main entrance to the tomb. You guys went in through a side entrance. So in the four corners of the room below you, uh, about 10 feet away, right, are these plinths that uh, recently have had these objects that have um, uh, taken their spots. They, they were levitating and attacking you. Um, there is, uh, uh, where is it here? Um, uh, a silver revelator, a wooden statue of a cherub, a holy book, looks like a version of the Vulgate, and a large candle. Um, all of them which animated and shrieked at you to, uh, how dare you um, enter the tomb of Sir Chide, and you must leave immediately. Now that only happened uh, whenever Snell entered the room. When Argus entered the room first, uh, everything was kosher. Then Snell entered and all, all, all things went crazy and it attacked everybody. Snell retreated back into the western corridor, um, and they didn't follow him there. Instead, they continued to attack uh, both uh, Halifax and and uh, Argus. Um, now, when... Okay, so Argus was dropped, and you guys have pulled his body back onto the stairs and were sort of uh, deciding what to do. So at this point, um, because it is actually important, Alfric, you are not there quite yet. I'm going to say you're sort of wandering through the, the whole... Uh, like you're kind of wandering through the chambers that led from the wormhole. Um, so as you guys pull the body back, you can actually hear Elfric's footsteps. And I, I'm not going to make you like role play out. Like who might that be? You know, like you know, it's, you know, it's Elfric coming. Okay. Um, you can tell the way he traips is like a wizard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My irritable bowels under your way. Exactly. <laughs> His presence manifests in other Everyone senses. Knows, knows wizards have digestive issues. It's just 
<laughs> it's all the intelligence trying to come out. Yeah. What do you think they're always making poultices and stuff like that? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All the lactose what, does, poisoning, what, you know? what do I smell? <laughs> it's, not river, it's not river mud I'm putting on that band aid. <laughs> uh, so we'll I, say I, we'll say that. Am I at the doorway? Am I at the doorway? Where you? Where you are is actually going to be in the circular chamber to the west. So there is a um, a 15 foot diameter circular chamber that has a statue of the sorcerer's maiden that um, that that appeared to Halifax in a vision. They removed a, a, an actual cloth blindfold, but that was over this white marble statue. She was staring at a uh, a strange stairway that was completely free of the rest of the dust that covers this dungeon, that leads down to the northeast. And you're in that chamber, okay? Eastward out of that chamber is a is a ten foot long corridor that opens up into the to the scene that we're in right now. Okay, so basically what I'm going to say, Alfred, is that you're in that room and you're looking eastward and you can hear that the heavy breathing and frantic like what are we going to do sort of uh, exclamations of your of your party members and we're going to pick up right where that happens right now. The so the statues are back down on the plinths. Argus is unconscious um, and we're going to turn first to David uh, to Snell and Halifax. What would you like to do? Uh, two two things I want to uh, I want to point out from last time, we dropped or it's actually Snell dropped one of those features, right? I yeah, I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, three now. I should have rewatched just to make sure, but I I think it was the book. It was the Revelator. <laughs> We're all gonna be <laughs> it was the Revelator. <laughs> uh, I remember being being amazed at the shot. Like of all those things, he hit the, like the smallest one. Okay, we'll go. Well, we'll go with the cruise. This is where it'd be oh, nice God. if we were actually streaming live because we could have everyone who's watching like tell us exactly what's going. But uh, let's chat. Let's take a poll. But uh, uh, statistically, they're all pretty much the same thing. So uh, we'll say we'll say it's the uh, revelator. As long as we only have three of them now. That's right. The yeah. Other thing is, I, I remember um, Halifax had to drop his uh, lantern. Uh, on yes. His way in. And that's still there, so it's illuminating the the room. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be like either kind of at the edge of that round room or in that hallway, providing some light. Yeah. So yeah. So Elfric, you can actually see like the dropped lantern that's actually in front of you. Um, uh, Snell, you went into the room, right? Like you're with everybody now, right? You're not. Yeah, I ran. I ran. Yeah. Across. Yeah. So Elfric, you're alone in that corridor. The lantern is there at the edge of the corridor, um, illuminating the scene beyond, um, and you can hear like to your right, like, you know, forward, and then to your right, you can hear, like, uh, the frantic breathing. So, well, what do you do, Halifax? Okay, so, um, uh, okay, so I, I think first I'm going to take stock of uh, uh, Argus. Uh, Ed may be dead to us, but Argus... Um, He's got a rising not, bump on it on the side of his head. I believe it was the candle that knocked him out. Um, and it's... Yeah, uh, maybe birds. Yeah, basically birds, yeah. Yeah, he's got birds going around. <laughs> His eyes are rolled back in his head. He looks. He looks pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, I think he was at like uh, negative one or negative two, something like that. But that doesn't. That doesn't really matter. That only matters for the the, the chart roll. Um, yeah. Okay. Well. Um. You know. Uh, concerned for my lessers, I would um, uh, uh, apply another uh, uh, dose of the uh, the brewmaster's balsam. Ah. Okay. All right. So Should pulling out the glass jar again. Up. Another big thing of black goop, right? Okay, so is that a roll, or does that just give you a straight... Uh, I think it is a roll. Uh, it just happens, but it does have the uh, uh, an unfortunate side effect, inducing his uh, armor class and saving floats. Uh, yes. Until, it, until the night's rest. So it gives and him... A... I already had to use it on him once, so it's <laughs> the second time. Right, it gives him a d4. Do you want to roll that? I do very much uh, uh come on baby it's on elder oh it's a one <laughs> <laughs> one okay uh but you know that's fine that gets him that he groggily wakes up like Ugh. um now is he already suffering cumulative effects from the first dose that's the same day right yeah it was just the the worms took him down two hours ago <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah maybe, not, maybe, maybe 30 minutes <laughs> yeah uh for those who don't know it should be pretty obvious based on what you everyone's seeing on their screen but uh, argus has a constitution of five, five. yeah so uh so that's a cumulative effect so um he was at minus one to armor class and saving throws previously now he's at minus two so i'm gonna mark that down because i'm gonna forget that if i don't write it down and i'm sure 
Ted will probably not remind me. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, no, he's, a, he's an honest guy. He's an honest guy. He takes his lumps. Uh, minus AC and saves for Ted. Okay. Uh, well, I'm putting it on posted on my computer right now. <laughs> <laughs> won't, be, won't be tasting taking that many lumps. Remind, remind myself to give Ted shit for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So he's he you know he wakes up and you can clearly see that his eyes are like crossed when he opens his eyes um, and it's highly highly likely that he is um, concussed in some sort of way and probably will be for some time. Um, uh, he can he can barely sit up without like clasping his head, you know that sort of thing. Not that we usually count on him, but uh, guys, I don't think we should count on him. Now at this point, Alfred, um, you can enter the scene if you like. What, what, I'm just going to switch over to them. So I just want to know what you did with Argus real quick, um, Alfred. What are you going to do? Uh, being a cautious person that I am, I'm going to wander down that ten foot corridor with a torch mm -hmm. and my staff. And the, uh, so I can see. The lantern is now and, at your uh, feet on the ground, shining into the room. The, I'm sorry, the what is? Uh, Halifax's lantern that he dropped is now oh. at your feet as you kind of look into the room. It's illuminating the room. Gotcha. Well, I'm approaching the light anyway. Okay. I'm going to kind of peer about before I go into that room because I hear the heavy breathing and I hear like, the, oh, no, he's down again. <laughs> <laughs> His constitution. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Put your finger in the hole; it's still bleeding. Right. Um, so Why did he choose this profession? Baker. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna look around. And see, do I see anything untoward? Do I see them in the archway of the other doorway? Uh, the room. I would say. I don't think you would actually, based upon the dimensions. I, I, it's, they went pretty much as far as they could up that stairway. Uh, but you can clearly hear them. I mean, they're only they're obviously like only like fifteen feet away. You know? I don't I don't think we have any light up there with us. Snell, do you have anything? Or your hands are empty too, right? You were... I was using yeah. your lamp that was in the hallway, but I believe yeah. John there wasn't. still illuminated the room. I remember like when I when I didn't remember that you dropped the lantern that I said it was going to be complete darkness and that's where we we're going to end it. But then you were like, oh wait, I know I dropped the lantern. Um, so yeah, you guys have no light source, but it's but you know there's um, a lantern has a thirty foot. Uh, radius, so it easily illuminates your staircase as well. So not, it's not a problem. But I don't even see like their feet or anything. No, like no, because they are around the corner. But like I said, you can hear them. Oh, okay. okay, I, I whisper um, very loud. Are you guys dead? <laughs> uh, 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 Argus tried, uh, but we uh, we we discouraged him uh, uh, yet again. What fell foe brought Argus low? Mm -mm. A candlestick. <laughs> <laughs> We're embarrassed to say. <laughs> I look around the room. Do I see any candlesticks, John? Uh, yes, you do. Actually, you you will say will you see one directly to your left in the northwest corner, on top of plinth. There is a candlestick. Um, the 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 plinths are um they're very moldy. So they're covered with like a mustard-colored fur-type mold um, that has actually crept up onto the objects themselves as well. Although a lot of that has actually been shaken off in the in the flurry of previous battle. Um, now you can also tell Elfric this is probably of more interest to you than the other was, um, and the other ones are actually um, recovering from battle as well. But you see that in the scuffle, the previously dust-covered floor has been cleared away a great deal, and you can see what is clearly a mosaic. Uh, on that dominates the entire floor. Um, it's tough to make out exactly what it is in the flickering lantern light um, and the fact that there is still some dust on the floor, but you you think that should you enter the room and look at it closely, you could determine what it's depicting. Um, now, remembering that oh. these things uh, uh, seem to uh, be territorial, uh, Hallie would call out, uh, don't, Alfred, don't, don't, don't come any, don't come any closer. Those wards the church was talking about there. They're those objects there that you see in the room. Okay. All right. How far away is the lantern from the doorway that I'm standing in? You are really your feet are at it. Oh. It is in it is in the corridor, like right at the entrance to the room. All right. I'm not going to allow my flesh to enter that room. I will take a five foot step back or whatever mm -hmm. and use my staff to hook the lantern okay right yeah yeah sure i'm assuming i'm assuming it's a staff like it's a smooth staff or is it like yeah. a gnarly cool nah nah it's, it's fine you can yeah 
you can use the other end of it if it's gnarly and cool at one end. <laughs> well, I would like a gnarly cool one then because then I can have the hook for the lantern and be caught on it and hang it out. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Do you right. roll, roll for gnarls, please? Yeah, exactly. It has, I'll roll for gnarl. It has I mean, 3.5 whorls in your staff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So using my staff as kind of like a as a big long pole, I'm gonna kind of dangle the lantern, and kind of like raise it up and see if I can see what the mosaic is on the ground. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. What could you see? So, what you can tell is, uh, like, like I said, it's not completely cleared, but it's obviously it's depicting a knight of some sort who is atop a a white charger, like a horse, um, and He's wielding a sword and at his feet, sort of St. George-like, he's piercing, he's like attacking something that's at his feet. Unfortunately, you can't really tell what that is um, because of the dust. And there's also underneath there is a, um, a an old Woldish inscription that's laid into the tile that's also laid out. You can make out a couple of words that you can see. Chide, C-H-Y-D-E, right? The name of the, the guy who's buried here. Um, you see uh, Defender uh, and you see the word Frost. Okay. All right, so we're in the right place. Um, assuming that the statue behind me is his girlfriend, Sans' wife, Sans' fey girl who is tricking you into uh, trying to take our loot. Um, all right. Uh, so I'm just going to whisper whisper in a very loud, kind of like uh, hilariously not quiet way to Halifax. You, you hit him with a candlestick? Uh... No, the uh, uh, wards that these church uh, that the that the church placed upon this tomb. I think that they're the objects themselves. Uh, and when Snell went into this room, they they rose and attacked. I rushed in to try to save them, but uh, uh, before I before I could, poor August was uh, well brained. Um, the first time. <clears throat> Do we... Oh, go ahead, David. Uh, is it reasonable to say that our fairly conscious friend at our feet who has a shield might give us said shield if we ask for it, or is that fine in NPC Cloud? Uh, no, you can take the shield, that's fine. I don't mind that. I'm going to beseech uh, our, 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 our birdie friend for a shield, and I'm going to say, uh, don't come in, they'll swarm, but if you do, we have a shield you can try to defend yourself with. Um, is it possible for me to just like slink to not going in the room? the base of the steps. If I did, would I be able to get a diagonal bead on the hallway since it's a square room? Uh, yes, if you went to the base, yeah. So can I kind of go there and, and like... <laughs> you know, like yeah, wait. so, Alfred, you see Snell up here holding, holding <laughs> Argus's shield. Can you the shield if you want to use it to get over to us? That's what I'm offering. No? I'm a whiz, man, I can't uh, use shields. Snell, you can see when you're at the base of the steps here, since um, some of the mosaic has been cleared away, you can you can see the mosaic as well. Um, and you also notice something. You see that there are um, long scratches in the floor that seem to lead from... Uh, from uh, they seem to lead from the corridor to the east towards the staircase that you're standing on. Am like I in the staircase in the east? Hmm? No, you're coming from the west. I'm in the west. Yeah. So to be clear so about the egress here, we have from the stairwell to the eastern corridor, or vice ver or vice versa. There are scratches in the floor. So um, uh, to be clear about the me means of egress here, um, all four cardinal directions have means. So um, uh, currently, Halifax and Snell are in the southern one, which is a staircase up. Okay. Mm -hmm. There, um, Alfred is in the corridor to the west, which is a ten foot corridor leading to a circular chamber. Um, yeah, it has a staircase. Uh, has a staircase going down to the northeast. Uh, not down like a layer. It's going to the northeast. It's a it's a staircase down to the northeast. Oh okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, um, the doorway is in the northeast corner. Yeah, that's in a different. That's in the circular room though. Yeah. Now there is in this square room. There is also a ten, ten foot quarter leading to the east, um, which you saw in your lantern light briefly, but didn't investigate because you got attacked. That there is another circular chamber ten feet that way as well. It appears to be the symmetrical right. Um, and then there, to the north, there is a double door. Now, this is where Argus went and investigated. Um, and uh, there's a, it's a, a double door made out of heavy stone, and it's streaked with damp. Um, and there is an inscription in Old Woldish on it that says, The Most Dear. 
D-E-A-R, which he reported back to you before all hell broke loose. Now, was he able to open? I can't remember. Did he get those open? He did. Or did he just start to? Oh, he he sure, he, yeah, he started to open them, yeah. Um, now, you can't really see what's beyond there, unfortunately, because of the way the lantern light's working. But So, there are rooms off every side of this square room. Mm -hmm. One goes up, which is where they're standing, which is the main entrance. Mm -hmm. One goes to the statue, and there's another corridor going off of that, and that's in the west. And then there's a, a circular room that we can't really see on the east, mm -hmm. and to the north are the stone double doors with the Woldish inscription. You got it. Um, free venison. Got it. <laughs> let's, let's see if we can get the front doors open and, first. So wait, guys, hold on one second. So I'm going to be like, I, I, I reach inside my robe and I pull out the scroll that Mossel Mardruge gave us. Mm -hmm. And I go, this might take care of the, um, have they described it enough now that I can guess that they're magically animated artifacts? It sure seems like it. I mean, they were levitating and talking to you and attacking. Right. Well, I didn't see any of that, so they described that to me. Yeah, though. yeah, how 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 he did? Okay, they could be lying so to now, you. So now, John, I need, to make a, I need to I need to understand a wizard thing here. Mm -hmm. Can I dispel them while they're not animated, or do they have to be animated before I can dispel them? Uh, with it, with enough description, you can tell that these things are enchanted. So if you use dispel magic on them, that would rid them of their enchantment should it be successful, right? So it's not like they're magical when they're levitated and not magical when they're not levitated. Yeah, yeah. That's right. They're magic all the time. Yeah, they're magic all the they're time. Always they're always magical. They are enchanted. Yeah. Now, then the other question, guys, comes is, is this the best use of that very, very powerful item that we got from a well, that, potentially uh, very vengeful wizard? That's that's the thing. So so Ali has a, has, a, has a thought. He'll say, listen, they seem to react to, to Snell's presence from they ignored Argus. I think that, I mean, I know my purpose here is pure. I know that I'm here sanctioned by the church on with holy purpose. And these things seem to be set here by the church. Why don't I convince them to go uh, guard the other entrance? Let them know that there's a new, there's a new hole. Um, no, because they're going to go right by me, dude. <laughs> you mm. walk You walk away. Uh-uh. No. Um, I do. Four hit points. AC nine. <laughs> <laughs> Dead man walking. <laughs> All right, yeah. so, so. If you, if you go hide, you won't see me. Um, I, I do, I, I do think we should, before we address these fiendish trinkets i do think we should attempt to open the doorway out should we need to run <laughs> <In a, laughs> can i can i like i mean i agree i agree with your 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 idea halifax but i think maybe before we uh poke the so we have a way out if we need to poke the behind, maybe maybe <laughs> we just see if we can find a latch somewhere to open the door so i'm gonna go back up I'm going to look at myself and be like, idiot, magic users can't use shields and toss it to the side. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, and just sort of like do a thorough patting down of, because we have a, a sunlight, right, mm -hmm. of the, the, the region of the doorway. Sure. If I feel any like levers or yep. stones that push in, etc. So any, any light coming through like a seam in the yeah, door? Yeah, there is. Uh, yeah, I think I described that last time. There is a little bit of a seam of daylight um, coming in uh, from... Uh, you know, like three of the sides, I guess, right? Um, but uh, yeah, it looks like, you know, a solid granite slab. Um, it appears to be, there is spots of lichen growth upon it, but it's not, it's it's not like overgrown. You, um, it's not, you saw the front of it, right? Uh, that it's, um, but that was covered with lichen and also had, uh, was, uh, had like sweet smelling wild roses were also uh, on the other side of it. So it looks, it looks very heavy. Um, not something that you could probably do yourself, but that's basically it. You don't feel any like levers that would suddenly make it swing open or anything like that. John, is, is there anything else in this hallway, like feeling around? Are there loose stones, rubble, or is it a, a clean hallway leading up to this? Uh, it's you wouldn't call it clean. Like you, you disturb like centuries worth of dust basically right um down here but there is a little bit of um detritus and stones and stuff like that you know um it's very dank like there's a very like moist and moldy smell uh down here as well okay 
um, wow. and uh, now that you now that you've actually spotted the scratches on the floor, you can see too that where you're standing, the scratches kind of drag up the center of the stairway as well, all the way up to the granite slab. Does anyone have any ability to determine how fresh those are, if at all? You can tell easily uh, just just looking that they are they're quite old. Okay. Yeah. How how deep are they? And I, I'm assuming like from your description, these are like something heavy was moved here not like some creature with claws was that's correct yeah it looks like um uh something was so, yeah exactly something heavy was dragged across the floor um and up the stairways basically like the heavy heavy grooves something was looted mm. but it but it goes all the way up to the granite slab yeah or down from it, it uh, i would imagine it's kind of hard to tell the now. That's probably true, yeah. Mm, okay, well, there's no levers, there's no hidden buttons. The, okay, so the doors are I heavy. Think, I'll press on them just I to try. Them. Right. I might as well. Uh, so it, you can you can feel like the weight of the stone, right? It's it looks like something that <clears throat> you know is meant to prevent people from coming in uh, just willy nilly. But you you kind of judge that you know if you've got some muscle behind it, multiple people, maybe you you can move it. With the looking around the edge, does this seem like a, a, a pull door or a push door? It looks like this you would. Not... Well, it, it looks like a, a piece of stone is what it looks like. That was just basically <laughs> like put there. You know what I mean? Like to block an entrance. So you can kind of imagine, like you know, it's it's it was obviously like the mound is like a, you know a slightly curved mound, and so the um, the entrance way, like the the rock was placed and then sort of put back against it, right? So um, the uh, what am I trying to say? Like the angle is sort of acute in your direction, right? It's like, you know, if, if you pushed hard enough, you might be able to topple it forward. Or maybe like if you if you uh, all grabbed like a side and shoved it to the side, maybe you could do that as well. You know, that's, that sort of thing. You know, but oh, okay. just picture what you can do with a gigantic fucking stone slab. That's basically what you're talking about here. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it is not it's not so hinged I've... or anything. It's a big stone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, uh, reaching into my uh, my pack, I pull out a few things. Like these things, these things might be helpful to us. Um, I pull out. Uh, I have some uh, uh, iron spikes that I might, we might be able to use to like uh, hammer into one and then like press and wedge. I have a I have a hammer, a small hammer, to drive them in. And um, what else do I have that? It's full. Uh, well, I have a chisel. If we need to, if there's anything like blocking it in the way, like a piece of stone that's actually jutting and making out, I could use the the, the chisel to make that uh, roll easier. Okay. Perfect. That makes sense. All right. So you guys aren't getting out the door right now. So now let's go back to the point at hand. What <laughs> do we want to do? I was just rereading the dispel magic. It basically is a 20 foot cube. It has 120 foot range. It has a 5% chance of failure, depending on the level difference between the caster and me. I'm first level. Whoever animated those guys are probably gonna be like fifth level or whatever, you know, um, not to metagame too much. But I mean, I'm just, I guess my point is, is that there's a fairly decent chance it will, it will fail. Now, the other thing I don't know is I don't know if that just blanket dispels everything in that room. And, and does that include like magic items that might be hidden in there or, does each animated object get like a save? I don't even so, know. I don't know how so be it. careful of the wording here, right? It's it's it ends spells of non instantaneous duration within a twenty foot cube area, right? So um uh it, it it's 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 spells that have been cast upon things or spells that are in effect, right? So got it. You know what not I mean? necessarily an enchanted item necessarily. Maybe not necessarily, but I just mean like if you're worried about like. Well, you guys don't really have magic weapons or items or anything like that, so yeah, so you don't have to. So I'm not that. worried yeah. about us. Yeah. I'm worried about the you know the staff of the magi that's lying underneath the floorboards <laughs> over there. Yeah. Right. Uh, by the way, a, a turn goes by. I do have the lantern count from last time still here. Okay. Okay. Um, You're a man of uh, noble deed. Would you like to parlay with them and see perhaps if they have an intelligence greater than just promoting us from entry? I I think. Um, I think it behooves us. I think that there are fewer now than there were before. Uh, Alfric, if you if you hide, they they seem to have no interest in in leaving their area. As soon as, as soon as we retreated, 
Um, in fact, as soon as I told them I was trying to get uh, Snell here out of their room and up the stairs, um, they let us. Uh, they let us retreat. Um, they they got a lucky shot in uh, me, but uh, uh, my armor should be uh, proof against most of their blows. If it were to come to that, uh, um, maybe I can convince them that our our purpose here is uh, is pure. If you send them by me, dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna be super pissed. <laughs> I'm just telling. You. Just ask if they'll give us entry for your quest. Maybe I don't know. Or ask them what's in the tomb, and you know, how do we get there? Yeah. And just... what is valuable in this tomb that we might <laughs> take from you? Mm-hmm. Like that. Totally here on the on dear the dungeon, dungeon master. master. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so what do you do? Okay, it could work. Okay. It could work. Let's do it. Do with this. Guys, he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> the first and, time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, be, before easily before take he goes and, before he goes and makes an ass out of himself, I'm gonna like kind of hold the lantern and the scroll so I can see it. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to take like a five foot step back, so I'm not necessarily in the room or even close to it. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to just be ready to read that dispel magic uh, scroll. All right, all right. So it's now you see the you see the wizard pull out a scroll, dangerous. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, here it comes. All right, Hallie, what are you going to do? Okay, be ready. Okay, so um, he's going to uh, take out that uh, that revelator. Okay. We found, we found a few things in the earlier room. There was like a revelator, a uh, air book, a box of uh, wrappers. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so he's, he's going to take that and hold that, uh, hold that up and uh, step into the uh, room with the objects and uh, see if they respond. Okay, so you walk into the room and uh, everything seems completely normal. Alfred, you see Halifax step in um, for presidents himself and he, he seems fine. You put him in a sack. Um, uh, I uh, walk up to... The, <laughs> Good idea. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... <laughs> <laughs> I have to just applaud that brilliant. This is this is role play right here. Put them yeah. in a sack. Put them in a sack. Best combat maneuver I've ever heard. Of, by the way. I'm not being sarcastic. Yeah. Oh. All right. All right. Step in it. Everything's quiet. You're like, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Uh-huh. Mm. Um, and I say, um, I start digging in my stuff for for a sack because I hear him say this, this is an excellent idea. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah. We are here on noble purpose sent as uh, uh, agents of the church to inspect this tomb and make sure that it is uh, safe and well guarded objects I know your purpose dress me silence I um, uh, sack in one hand I go to the the cherub that got me last time (laughs) son of a bitch bastard <laughs> and um uh, i place my I, I place my hand on it and i say i know that you are here to guard this we are also here for the for the uh, security of this tomb eyes and speak to me all right Elfric, you're you're looking at him and it's like this is all faintly ridiculous <laughs> They told you that they attacked, but it sure doesn't seem like they, they look like normal objects to you. <laughs> you got your scroll up like ready. You're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing again, Halifax. Okay. Um, Back it. Put him right. in the sack. <laughs> <laughs> At, that's my cue. I'm going to shove that bastard in the sack. Like, All right. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it does not resist. It does not rise up. Not, neither do the other ones. And the chair goes uh, w- okay. willingly into the sack. <laughs> Using the laws of physics. <laughs> Thunk. Nice. Um, all right. Um, I will take uh, one of my. Um, now I've got this bag full of uh, objects. I'm gonna take one of my iron spikes. I'm gonna nail that bag down like into like a crack or crevice in the floor so it can't. If they don't animate, do that yet. Don't don't do that yet, dude. Tie that. Tie them inside that sack, like tie, like loops, rope around the yeah, sack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if I didn't say yeah. that, yeah, I'm gonna close, close the sack, close the sack, okay. and anchor it down. Okay, cool. Yeah, all right. So you're just gonna hammer it right into the floor. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, I would look for a place like I can. I can see that there's like this um, 
mosaic on the floor or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe like in, the in, at like in the, the, the crack, like over on the side, like in a scene. Okay. Sure, yeah. By the front door, man. Take him up by the front door. Oh, well, hold on. Oh, um, hot so the, up there. Uh, the hammering will be loud. You know this before you start. You okay with that? Yeah. Well, hold on. Before you do that, did, did we not find away. a large chest earlier in one of the other rooms? Am I imagining that? Say again? Did we not find a large chest in one of the other rooms from which we brought a small chest out? Or no, it was uh, it's stuck in a hole, wasn't it? it? No, there was. You're right. There was like a there was a coffer, but it was relatively small. That had the treasure in it, and then within that was a small wood box that actually had those holy wafers that were strangely wood. preserved. Would these, would fit, these in there? fit in there? Uh, that's, small good. Objects, that's, right? that's a good question. Let me just check. Uh, let me check what it if says so, here. So, put them in the box. Yeah, put them in the box. Yeah, put them in, what's in the box. The box closed if you're really worried, and then they'll be in like a container. <clears> yeah, and uh, uh. Alfred, you can go pick up that box. Even if we didn't bring it, it's easy for you to just go back into the room where we were and pick it up. If yeah, you there was... Okay, so inside the box, it was a locked metal box, and inside was a revelator, a scroll. Don't forget that scroll, by the way. Um, you saw that it was liturgical in nature, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, a prayer book and the 20 holy wafers. But So, I w yeah, I would say that you could probably fit the items. Perfect. Yeah, but... That that yeah, assumes that, that assumes that you take everything else out of the box, right? The original treasure. So, yeah, I, th I think we took those already. You did. Okay. All right. You, you guys have noted down who has what from that tr that little treasure pile. I don't believe we have, but we can do that right now. Um, yeah. When we're dungeon uh, is when we're dungeoneering and stuff like that, I want to be careful that we that we divvy up stuff as we find it. It's one thing to have party treasure when you're sort of in town. But not not when you're actually like. I believe Ted offered to take it all initially, yeah. just because he's the big meaty guy. But uh, since you've already taken the revelator from him, Halifax has the relevant revelator. I think. Um, I think it maybe behooves. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it's it's a, Argus to take said, the uh, scroll. Yeah, I mean the, the the total of all the things you said was a fifty um, p weight. Yeah, that sounds about right. Right, uh, there was like the, the little box of little box of cookies, mm -hmm. the uh, book, scroll, and the silver revelator. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, Halifax is pretty strong. He can he can carry that stuff unless there's any of that stuff he doesn't want. Oh, okay, sure. Let's do that. Just just in case any of that stuff tends to be the stuff that. Okay, so who's taking the box that has the uh, the the objects in it now? Is that you as well, Halifax? Box. So, are Alfred, we, are we bringing that with us? If, if you bring that chest, bring it in, yeah, I mean, I shove it into it the room me. where I am, and I'll put those things in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll bring the box down the hallway, John, and using my staff, shove it into the room. Because um, I have a feeling that as soon as one, me or David step foot into that room, they're going to go all well, over. It's a metal box, fortunately. Okay. So is there any way we can jam the lock or... You know, we can also just take rope and wrap it around. We're all carrying like 50 foot sure. lengths of rope. Why don't we tie it up and turn it upside down so that the weight of the box is pressured on the lid? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, right, you, 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 Halifax does all that sort of stuff and, uh... I'm gonna get my sack back, though. I want my sack. Sure. sure. You got your sack back. Help and so there, there. there's this very strange looking <clears throat> uh, device in the middle of the room now. Upside down. <laughs> rope tied around it. Um, <laughs> does, does Snell or Elfric enter the room now? I'm gonna tip my toe in just to see if anything happens. I'm just going to like... <laughs> it rattles around and kind of moves across the floor a little couple feet. And you can hear um, muffled voices from... How dare you step foot into the tomb of Soja? You can hear that again. But they don't, they don't, they don't, they are, yeah, same thing. You know, it's, it's continuing to like freak out a little bit as this box sort of just scrapes its way along the floor. Just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. High five. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Nicely done. Um, all right, perfect. Cool. So while you're tr trying to ignore it, you can. Yeah. Do you want to, You want to stabilize it or something? Yeah. Yeah. You want to tie it to something so it doesn't leave the room. Yeah. I'm assuming we're not using full fifty feet of one of our ropes, right? Do we want to just like cut a portion off, or or I guess we can just use all fifty feet. Ooh, cutting rope, man. That's that's. Yeah. If you cut the rope, which is totally fine, you do need to know on your sheet how many feet of rope you actually right, do let's have. Just, let's just leave. <laughs> let's just leave it as fifty. We can retrieve it later. It's fine. 
Um, <laughs> it's a magic. Yeah, like a, this just, huge, thick coil that's all around yeah, can, this well, well, can, we, can we, like, tie it to one of the pillars as well? So it's sort of... Around the plinth? Like dog. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Row, 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 row. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> go away, go away, go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. okay. This is done. Can I just, like, look at these scrape marks and sort of, like, nose around um, to the other corridor to the east and see what I see? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so... Can I, also, while he's doing that, I'm he's doing that. I just want to take off Ted's cloak mm -hmm. and use it to brush off the rest of the mosaic, so I can see the whole thing. Oh, All right, cool. Uh, so let's do this room first, then, um, Alfred. Whenever you look uh, down at the thing and you brush away the rest of the dust, um, it's definitely it's definitely Sir Chide, right? Um, uh, uh, it's a, he's atop a white charger and he's piercing the heart of what appears to be a fairy knight with his sword, just like right at the base of his. Of his, that's being trampled underneath by his uh, horse's hooves. Um, the inscription in Old Wolvish, um, as you wipe it away, reads this. Here lies the noble Sir Chide, slayer of Frost, defender of the king. And Frost is, like, capitalized as his king. Does the legend of Sir Chide predate the Empire? Uh, no, no. The... the uh, uh, it was under the auspices of the Duke of Brackenwald at the time that uh, that one of the members, one of the three uh, members of the Triple Compact, was like the nobility, like the people, basically fighting against. It was uh, the Duke. So who would the king? What? Who would the king be? Is it the emperor? Oh yeah, it, it, yes, it would be like yeah, the emperor at the time. It, it wasn't. That's that's actually true. It probably wouldn't have been called like imperator at the time. It would have been more like a king. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't make the connection to what you were asking. Uh, yeah, so that's what you see down there. Um, down the corridor. Uh, yeah, down... Yeah, I, Halifax would totally, like, peek down that uh, that eastern hallway while he's looking at the... Yep, okay, the yep. So it's now on Halley looking down there with the lantern. You can see that it goes down another 10 feet into a, a, um, an equally sized 15-foot diameter circular chamber. Um and you can see that uh, in the southeastern corner, so in the opposite corner of where the woman statue was, right, um, there is a full-length mirror with a silver frame that's hung from the wall. And it's uh, hung on the wall that is behind a plinth that obviously held a statue. And that plinth looks exactly the same as the one that the woman was standing on but there is no statue on that plinth. Instead, on the wall behind it is a is a mirror. Okay. Does scrape marks emerge from or like orient from there? It sure does. Okay. It sure does seem that way. Yep. Now, um, because you're looking down a ten foot long corridor, you cannot see any means of egress out of the room. You just kind of spot that is what you're sort of seeing from this distance. Okay. In anything at all in the? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Your head, hands up. I was just curious. In the hallway that I'm in, is it just blank? Uh, yeah, it appears to be normal. Yeah, equal to the other one. Yeah, stone. Go ahead, Mike. Would, would the statue of the Frost Maiden, if all the doors were open and everything else, would she have an unobstructed view of the plinth? No. The, the, the Maiden specifically, and they noted this last time, was direct when they took off the blindfold, she was directly looking at the stairways that led down that were surprisingly clear. Um, to the northeast, and that uh, the the archway that led to that staircase was carved in the likeness of intertwining branches of trees. Which uh, recognizing recognizing that there may be sort of a symmetrical design here, can I peek my head to the left and see if to the um, northwest there's another archway? Do you go down the corridor to actually do that? Yeah, yeah, I'm in the corridor with Halifax. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, so you move down the corridor and take a look. Yeah, so uh, indeed, when you look directly to the left, you do see in the exact same thing, uh, a stairway that leads to the northwest down, um, framed by uh, stylized trees and uh, worked in stone. And there is also uh, another corridor that leads to the north mm -hmm. that is shadowed in darkness right now. All right. Gentlemen, uh, this tomb seems to be... Uh, mirrored on either side, I suspect there may be additional chambers to the north of this circular one, and perhaps past the stone doors that our knightly friend opened larger. Do we want to do one or the other first? Turn goes by. Um, yes. Didn't they say in the legend that there was believed to be a doorway to fairy in this tomb? Uh, she, uh, my dream told me that. Right, like my 
no, no. Cool. It, her, your dream was very. Your your vision was very vague. She was like, "Come find me and bring me the ring, and I will and I will be yours." Elfric, though, um, at the institute, um, after applying them with a substantial amount of gold, actually found the deep research. And one of those one of those uh, passing references was that um, there is actually a door to fairy uh, in this tomb. Is what which you discovered. Does anyone else think that the statue of a fairy <clears throat> princess looking at a doorway that's mysteriously clear, that's covered by like intertwining trees? might just lead to the doorway to Ferry, which is probably not a place we want to go. Well, I also, <laughs> well, yeah, I would also say that, like, <laughs> coincidentally, because uh, as just sort of a, a character you know, oddity, when I was going through the forest with my own uh, mirror glass shard, I was sort of paranoid and looking at my shoulder with it. Um, I would be suspicious of the mirror in this room as a, a form of revealing, perhaps, realities that aren't obvious to us. So, whether, whether it is uh, a portal itself or not. So, um, I'm going to be a little worried about that mirror until we're all sort of, like, joined. I'm going to be cautious once I see that. I'm going to sort of step back. Um, I relay what I saw to you all and, um, and agree with your fairy assessment. This yeah. looks a little unnerving. It seems that the, uh, this, the, the other statue was stolen and the mirror replaced it. Stolen or it escaped? I would just... <laughs> all the uh, all the other things that came to life could, could float about. That's all I'm saying. Um, and can I also relate to? Um, uh, 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 or can I can I can I remind everyone of the the uh, blindfold with the sigils? On the yeah, floor. I was going to say that I, I would look... on on her eyes. Yeah, right. They were they were holy symbols, right? Like yeah, holy agent. symbols on on the yeah. inside. Yeah. Red red threaded revelators. And you guys took them off, which is a class. No other exactly. choice, man. No other that's choice. That's exactly what happens in a murder mystery, right? Or yeah. murder movie, right before they get murdered by the statue who's come to life. I think this is gonna be a Doctor Who episode pretty soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, that, in I fact, I have that mirror up again. <laughs> now I'm getting real spooked. <laughs> Let's go investigate the double doors that um that uh Ted was pushing open because really our goal here is to get the ring. Yeah. I don't know if the body is gonna be down like in the in the other chambers or not, but before we go down into another part of the tomb, we should probably go check out that the double doors. See at if his body's I, there. At least see look in, right? Yeah. yeah, see if he's got a ring or anything else in there. That'd be awesome. That'd be good. Yeah, then we could make a better choice. Because right now we've just, we okay, there's a, a round room with a mirror. And he saw another door. Did you see another doorway? You did, right? Yes. Wait, wait, and, what are you asking? Another a hall? Oh, I'm just like, we, we, we've we done a preliminary scout of the re of the round room. Let's do a preliminary scout of the double doors room. And see yeah. What's yeah. Oh, I got you, got you, got you. Okay, so you go back into the square chamber and you look through those double doors. Once again, that say, uh, the most dear. And you look in, and it's a very strange sight. The very first thing you notice is that, and, and we'll get back to them, but I'm just going to drop it right here. There are two skeletons that are actually floating in midair, and they appear to be dancing a waltz. Love it. Like a dun 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 But there's no music, but you can easily see that they're dancing a waltz. They're dancing arm in arm, and they appear to be slick with moisture of some sort. They're glistening a little bit, and one, um, uh, they're both wearing a very nice looking jewelry one is wearing a pearl necklace and the other is wearing a gold medallion that looks quite valuable both of them look quite valuable um and they appear to be just sort of d dancing uh solemnly around this very long room the room itself appears to be 15 feet wide so exactly the same width as the room that you're in right now but quite long it's actually uh 30 feet long Ending in another door, another double door that is barely illuminated by the extent of your lantern light. Um, there is uh, the walls are lined three on the eastern side, two on the western side by coffers, uh, long stone body length coffers. Uh, the ones on the left appear to be slightly ajar, like the lids are actually open. Those the the two oh. on, the two on the west side appear to be slightly open. Yeah. Um, and, uh, 
they all appear to have, both on the left and right side, some brass plaques at the foot of each of them with writing on them. Of course, you can't read it right now. Um, now, uh, most disturbing of all, though, well, I guess the skeleton is probably the most disturbing, but um, uh, basically on a diagonal uh, from the northwest to the southeast across the middle of the floor towards the far end is a massive fissure um, where s sheets of slime are actually... Uh, dripping from the ceiling into this fissure, like like a like an actual like thin, constant like bleh, you know a sheet of of constant uh, uh, semi transparent uh, slime is dripping down into this fissure, right? So that's what you see. Now, who was the first to to sort of po poke their head into the room to look? I I would do it. I would do so, it. So Halifax, when you, you you just sort of like look into the room with the lantern and your son and you see all these things, the skeletons actually um, they're continuing to dance, but both of their heads sort of turn towards you and their jaws open and um, they actually speak, although their jaws don't actually like mimic the actual speech of what they're saying, and they say "come" and they um, one is a uh, very male and one is a definite female voice. Um, although they're not wearing any sort of clothing or anything like that, is it's just the the jewelry that they're wearing. Um, but they turn towards you and they gesture towards you and they say, Come, dance with us. And they say, Join us. Join our revelry. Nice. Don't be a wallflower. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not dressed, uh, not dressed for dancing. You'll enjoy it. Enter. David, just give him a double-handed push. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's Junior Crom all over again. Yeah, get out there. Are there a bunch of sad teenagers along either side? Yeah, yeah exactly. People dance in the middle. Totally, yeah. So, sorry, just to get one, I, I, I hate to make your beat yourself, but there are four coffers in total, two on either side of the room. It's no, one, uh, no, no, no. So oh. Check you right there. There's five coffers total. Coffers total. There are two on the western side, both of which are ajar, and there are three along the eastern side, uh, which appear to be closed. Um, they are evenly spaced. Gotcha. Okay. Skeletons in the middle dancing, uh, and a fissure pouring a thin waterfall of slime going uh, bottom left to top right corner. Uh, so it's it's in the basically the fissure is in the center of the room, but in the but, but at the far end, it's basically like a fifteen foot wide fissure that jaggedly cuts across the the tiled floor from the northwest towards the southeast, but sort of ends in the middle of the room. Oh, it's okay. in the middle. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so look at, looking in, you could get around it. Uh, you way. you could if you went around the eastern side and climbed over yeah. one of the coffers. Now uh, to be clear that there is a slime there is slime that is dripping from the ceiling into the fissure. The fissure is not dripping the slime. It's it's like coating. Like you would have to like walk through a curtain of slime in order to actually um, approach from uh, you know move around the western side. Can I just see what last thing before Mike goes? What, yeah, what's from? it coming from? He he looks up. There appears to be a thin. Uh, line like a crack in the ceiling, but but you wouldn't call it like a fissure, right? Like this, there's like a gaping fissure in the in the floor, but there's like a thin. It actually seems like the thinness of the slime coming from the ceiling um, is is caused by the thinness of the crack that it's seeping through. You see what I'm saying? One one more slime question for for our slime podcast. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> does it seem? Welcome to slime talk. Um, does it seem <laughs> like the snail slime? Is there any recognition? To the slime we saw and all the sort of like snail trails in the uh, the tunnel. It does not. It does not. Okay. Although you would say that uh, that the that uh, now that you're trying to make the associations with the slime, that the um, the slick moisture that appears to be coating the skeletons does appear to be the same substance that is dripping from the ceiling. Interesting. Okay. Is is there a dance pattern taking them through the curtain? Uh, yes, it does actually. That's a good point. And, it, and yeah. they're they're solid, right? Like when they go under it, it like yeah, it like drizzles over, over them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like but this. but they do not seem to be affected at all. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna be honest. I would probably take a couple steps back and say maybe we <laughs> should look at the other rooms first. Enjoy your dancing. Uh, we'll, we'll be right back. And, just, anytime. Close the door. Just, <laughs> we will be here. Yeah. Maybe, dun, dun, dun. All right. They, they seem like, nice. Doosh. They seem friendly. Yes. 
I don't know, man. Getting a job at that inn right now seems like a pretty good idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Everything here just seems like it's bad. Um, All right, let's go I back to the statue. The mirror freaks me out. Let's go back to the statue. That freaks me out. So maybe we go check out that doorway first. The statue side one? We yeah. Haven't... Yeah. Can I also grab, like, a stone off the ground if I see one anywhere? John? Sure. Yeah, you can... You can... Small stone, when, yeah. When we get to that that archway, can I sort of toss it through and see what happens? Okay, so just to be clear, you're in the statue room now, and you're going to toss a stone down the stairways yeah, as a tree. A true room, I'm going to toss it down the stairways. Okay, cool. Unless one of these two don't want me to. All right, so uh, you um, first of all, like if you who, who's got the, who's got the light, Halifax. Halifax. I have Ted's lantern. You have your own, right? Yeah, I've got one. Oh, so we, have, we have two lanterns going. We've always had two lanterns going, right? Yes. Yeah, because I have one marked down, but I was assuming that it was for both, right? Yeah, okay, so uh, I'm marking another turn, by the way. Give me a sec. Should we... Rolling dice. The... Pay no attention to me rolling dice. <laughs> Should we stagger the lanterns, um, Matt, so that we uh, don't run out of oil all at one time? Yeah, if, if, if we're all together, yeah, I'll... I'll that mine. I need my hands anyway for my uh, sword and my shield to be ready, so... Okay, so I'm going to make a note. Um, this is uh, Halifax's, and Alfred's yours will be the active one. Okay. Sorry, but before, John, I don't mean to redact what I said, but before I throw <laughs> that stone, can I take my mirror glass shard and look at both the statue and the portal through that mirror? Let's see if I see anything. Uh, it appears to reflect what you think it would reflect. Yeah. Uh, now. No. So before you throw the stone down, just uh, to give you a clear description, assuming that um, Elfric or Halifax would actually shine the light down that thing, right? Okay, go ahead. If, I mean, uh, it's a reasonable assumption. It, yeah, before I shine it, how much, can I check and see how much oil is left? Uh, yeah, you've gotten, uh, no, not really. It's not, it's not, you don't really do that. It's sort of like you, you mark off an oil flask and then it goes until it's done, you know. But I'm not going to surprise you with it. I'll let you know. You, you have exactly, uh, let's see. Uh, you've gone 12 turns out of the 20... No. 1, 2, 6. The lantern is what? 24 turns? Uh, 76, I think. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I had my mark wrong. Hold on. Uh, so it, it's exactly halfway done. You've gone 12 turns out of 24. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so... Sorry. My footwear came off. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, I'll, I have one half full enter. That's correct, yep. I got it marked. Okay. Is the light from the lantern interacting with things beyond this portal? Yes. Does it appear to be lighting? Yes, it is. So it is It is. Uh, it is reflecting uh, down the stairway. So for, first of all, once again, the first thing you notice in the lantern light is that it's pristine here, and there's a clear line right at the archway, like a straight line, like where the dust goes right up to it, and then ends, and then it's pristine all the way down. Um, once again, tree branch archway, tree branch archway uh, carved out of stone, um, and the stairway itself appears to be uh, very finely cut. It appears to be much, uh, a much more, uh, like a much more skilled mason laid this stone than the rest of the tomb, which is pretty fine it's in itself. But this is, appears to be of a completely different make. Um, now, when you shine it, the light down there, you see that um, the walls are actually reflecting the light in a way that is indicative of of uh, the shimmer off of water. Do you know what I mean? And that's towards the bottom of it, towards the bottom of the stairway. So it's just a very specular wall. So it, goes, it, it appears to go about 10 feet down. Okay. I, I would like to go look down the other hallway before we start going into creepy, creepy water light. Do you mind if I throw the stone first, just to see how it reacts? I'll stand yeah, to stop I'm gonna it. Flip, I'm going to flick a pebble down there. Sorry, what did you say, Mike? Just We're going to stay at the top of the staircase and look down, and I'll, I'll hold the lantern out on my stairs. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going in. I'm just going to sort of thumb a, thumb a pebble down. And sure, see. you hear out. Honestly, what, while he's doing that, I can't. I don't think I could keep my eyes off my girlfriend. <laughs> right, you're like, uh, <laughs> um, You all hear, though, you hear a plunk of stone hitting water. Now, does that plunk occur as it crosses the threshold or as it lands? As it lands down there. Actually, I should reveal more to you because the lantern light would... It only goes... To, it, the stairways only go down 10 feet. So, 
Um, at the very bottom of the stairs, uh, what you're seeing, and you're still at the top, you haven't crossed the threshold, so, um, is you see that there are dozens of what appear to be uh, candles, small little candles, like votive candles, right? But they're actually floating in midair, like blocking passageway to whatever opens up down there, right? So right at the bottom of the stairs, and it's quite beautiful, right? And they're just dozens of them just sort of floating in midair, right? Your stone passed through that and plunked into what appears to be um, a, uh, a a large pool of of water, right? It, it appears to be, you can't really tell, but it's, it, it, it goes as far as your lantern light takes you, as far as lantern light goes. That's it. Uh, does that water uh, have any similarity to the sort of pearlescent slime from the big central? No, river? it appears to be normal water. Yeah. Oh, and I would just oh, say at I'm... <laughs> I would say at the very edge, and uh, because of the angle, you're at this top of this stairway. Um, you can see that there is something, some sort of object that is in the uh, appears to be in the center of the room, some sort of solid object, but like maybe maybe stone. You can't quite see, but there's something in the midst like of that pool. You know what I mean? Like candles in the way. Yeah, the candles are in the way. Plus, you're you're up high, so you're seeing it from an angle. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. And the lady statue is not responding or. No, nope. you have not crossed the threshold. A stone crossed the threshold, but none of you have. Um, do we hear like anyone pushing a little coracle off the little island in the middle of the underground lake, <laughs> bring, bringing out the magical ring? Yeah. No, nope. Okay. <laughs> Thief's baggins. <laughs> um, yeah, I I don't know about you guys. I don't feel like going down there. I want to look and see what's in some of these other hallways first before we start exploring different levels. Okay. All right. You want to go to the other circular chamber real quick? Yup. All right. Uh, let's go over there. I would be very cautious as we approach that mirror and sort of like with an abundance of paranoia as we like look and see if I see my reflection in it. Okay. Do one of those. I don't know. Terrified. So are you sort of like are you are you passing directly in front of it to take a look or are you? No, no, I'm gonna I'm like gonna get to the edge. We'll say I'm like I'm coming from the hallway, right? Mm -hmm. I'm crossing into the threshold of this room. Yeah. At what point in the room would the mirror be intersecting with me? Uh, theoretically. Basically, when you were in the middle, right? Like, is is it in it is in the exact southeastern corner, uh -huh. right, of this round fifteen foot uh, wide room? Okay, can I do another pebble thing and just, I don't know why I'm, I, I love these pebbles. Pop them to the center of the room and see if anything happens. Sure, yeah. yeah I was, those two portals. Tick, 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 tick. I, I want to go in there and like watch watch down the stairwell as he throws. Um, well, can I tie a, I, I, I'm being a little paranoid, but can I tie a rope around my, wait, how many ropes do we have? We used, we left one at the entranceway. I have we'll a rope. That, Argus we'll, had we'll a say, rope. I will say we used uh, Ted's rope. Okay. Yeah. At, at the entrance that we left there, because we left it in the case we had to escape the way we came down. Do either of you have ropes as well? I have one written on my character sheet. Okay, I so one of them we used to tie up the, the candlesticks. So that's two ropes. I have a rope as well. So I'll just say I use my rope. Can I just tie it around my waist real quick and hoist it to them and say, I'm going to take a look at this. <laughs> Is that okay? Wait, sure. I look, at, I look at him like he's an idiot. It's a mirror. Oh, I don't, I don't, <laughs> <Okay>. I don't <laughs> trust. <laughs> and, and what are you doing? I'm gonna go look in the mirror, but I want to like have them holding the, the rope in case something weird. Happens. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna pass directly in front of the mirror and take a look inside, look at it. Yes. Just to be clear. Okay. Do it. Do it. Yes, I am. Do it. Okay. So you guys have the other end of the rope, and you. And you... Wait, 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 wait. Should I put the blindfold on? Should I put the blindfold on, guys? Then what are you gonna see? Okay, I'll just go look in the mirror. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, you creep up and you've got the rope on. You're like, what's what's gonna happen? I need you to make a save. Uh, Fail that. state time. <laughs> save save versus <laughs> saving throw versus paralysis, please. Uh, I knew it. All right. <laughs> Let's see paralysis. So you're trying to hit the number or higher. Yeah. What is the number we're looking for here? So we. Fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. It's not gonna be easy. Oh, you're rolling. You're rolling on your own. Okay, cool. I yeah. just realized that I'm gonna be turned into a statue, and you're gonna have to foist me out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's friend got turned into a statue and was dragged out of here. 
All right. Uh, I got a 20. Oh. oh. Yeah. Man. Nice. I did. <laughs> Beautiful. Nice. Great. Uh, okay. Okay. So uh, you you see your reflection in the mirror, and you can feel like everything slow down, like time slows down, and everything as you as um, uh, uh, Alfred and Halifax. You also witness this. And he sort of like crawls to a slow, and then he sort of pops out of it, and he and he continues forward and stumbles onto the ground quickly uh, out of I, I... out out of the way of the mirror of the direct when i see him acting weird i'm gonna yank really hard on that rope okay move. yeah so then so then it's feeder dread yeah no and you're 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 dragged back uh, towards your companions okay uh it's bewitched we have to break the mirror it's bewitched where's the stone i'm gonna grab another stone and throw it at the glass <laughs> like, yeah. all right that would be worth a lot of money uh, you, yeah, don't, don't, don't break it. Just don't look. You can tell as Snell was doing that, as you guys were looking at the mirror, I'm um, expecting something to happen. That that it does appear to it's it's a full length mirror, right? Like a dressing mirror, um, but hung on the wall. But it does appear to be um, uh, uh, the the frame is made out of solid silver, and it's beautifully wrought. And it appears to be en oh, yeah. en engraved silver as well. That it has alternating. This is interesting. Alternating revelators and unicorns, all the way around the all frame. Right. All right, right, I got so, a, I've we got have an a idea. <laughs> we have a bag. <laughs> Here's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to put, I want to put that blindfold on. I'm gonna go, pick that thing up and turn it around. Okay, you just basically switch it around on the wall. Yeah, okay. So it's facing backwards. Great. And yeah. Not us. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. You seem to be fine. You doubted me on the blindfold. Come on. <laughs> 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 we did then. You kind of have to be, you, you kind of have to be guided by your companions. You're like, okay, your hands, okay, you, but you figure it out. Yeah. Sure, and use the blindfold on yourself, Halifax. Yeah, I see. Well, be aware too <laughs> that you. I, did, I didn't use the rope. <laughs> be aware that when you do that, Halifax, that you are standing behind this plinth, this empty plinth that appears to have something has been dragged off of it, right? Okay, so yeah, I, I, I kind of turn it around so it's facing the wall, so we don't have to worry about it. Is there anything like written on the plinth or? Uh, no, the plinth the appears to be round, three feet across, and one foot high. There is nothing on, uh, nothing engraved upon it, but that it, you do, you can, you can tell that it is an exact mirror of, uh, no pun intended, of the of the plinth and the other side where they're made into standing. Is, is there anything written on the back of the mirror now that we turned it around? Uh, no, actually, it is plain. Was there anything? Was there anything? I mean, my eyes were closed, but was there anything like behind the mirror that these guys may have seen when I turned it around? Uh, no, but that you can see that. Um, it was hung some time ago because there is definitely like a discoloration of the stone behind it, or I should say, the stone around the mirror is discolored. The behind the mirror is actually much more clean. Um, gentlemen, uh, can, we, can we check one, the plinth? Is it hollow? Uh, you tap on it. 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 I don't know how you would really tell, but it it it, 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 it appears solid. Gentlemen, what if we were to take this mirror and shine it upon those un dead waltzers do you think the foul magic uh, uh, possessing them to dance would uh, cease at the very least man they can check and see make sure that they look good is it something you would like to try yeah but do we investigate the rest of this hallway first no, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just throwing it up there yeah yeah, yeah. What's, Alphax are you talking oh, no. yeah you're muted you're muted Sorry. Any better? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I like that idea, David. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I something just, we can uh, pocket it for now, but I think it's something to consider. Or if we find something big and ugly and it starts chasing us, I'm going for the exactly. mirror thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I was saying. We got a tool, David. We so, got a tool. Uh, once again, when is it, once again, it's the length, it's the height of like a person, right? So I would say it's probably about, we'll make it six feet, right? So it's, it's to, to round it out. So it's six feet tall, and I would say probably um, two feet wide. And it's extremely heavy, right? It's 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 it, you know solid silver. Plus you've got like a, a thick sheet of glass, um, you know. So. Would uh, be two men, maybe, or. Uh, you might need more. I would say like one person could dedicate themselves, but that's like the only thing they'd be carrying. They'd be moving at half movement rate. You know the whole thing. It's you know it, you'd be completely dedicated to using that thing. Um, and you'd be slow considerably, uh, but as... Plus, I, th I think your uh, your wizard friend would be very pretty interested in a giant magic silver mirror. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not even gonna like figure out what the encumbrance is because I think it's just such a bulky thing that it it basically encumbers you automatically. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. 
Mm-hmm. But you could carry yeah, it. It, not, it is something that a human being could carry. Back. Yeah. No. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, do you, we wanted to investigate the plinth and all that? Guys, I kind of disrupted us, Darn. I think we... I we think John already said it was Sal. Yeah. yeah, it's Sal, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say a turn goes by. Uh, uh, the... What's Sal? Can I peek over to the northern? Sorry, we're all talking. Go ahead. Uh, we just, all want to do the same thing. Real quick, uh, I just need to know: um, Are you, is, is someone taking the mirror? Is the mirror staying where it is? Staying. Staying. Okay. Continue. We peek into the northern hallway and see if it leads to another fifteen by fifteen square chamber. Or the lantern shines forth into the northern corridor, ten feet down once again, which aligns with what you've so far mapped on the western side. It enters into, likewise, uh, uh, if you've got your accurate maps out. There appears to be a, a mirrored chamber on this side as well. So 15 feet wide uh, by 25 feet long, uh, but with much different contents. Now, the mirrored one on the other side was the chapel of St. Sedge, right? Where the statue of St. Sedge with the red candle was, right? This one, however, is lined with seven statues of what appear to be footmen that are all worked in dark stone and each one of them is carrying what appears to be an actual weapon as in like not carved like an actual weapon is held in their stone grips all right so you're entering from the middle of the southern wall so on either side of you so in the um, i'm going to give you the layout of the of the statues all right so on either side of you in the southeast and the southwest corridor is a statue all right then in five foot increments along the western wall, there are three more. All right, so you should have four lining the western wall. Got it? So there's one in the southeastern, cor- uh, southeastern corner, like I told you. And then at the far end on the northern wall, there are two one in the northeast corner and one five feet directly uh, to the left of it, to the west of it. So in the middle of the northern wall. Yeah. So. Got it, got it, got it. There is a five foot space there in the northwestern corridor that there, there is actually a door. A small wooden door, right? Now along the eastern side, which as you as your map probably notes now, which is devoid of statues, um, there is uh, what appears to be a faded mural of some sort. And now the walls all in, in the entire room are uh, mold patched. There's like a vivid fuzz of like a like a hard to look at with the eye uh, awful mixture of uh, vivid yellow and purple and it appears to be um coating uh not the statues so much maybe the back of the statues but along all the walls and definitely on the on the mural um and it's obscuring exactly what the mural is depicting you do not see anything moving in here though with 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 what i experience you know, I, I realized, you know, I made a save against paralysis. I felt myself stiffening up. I got it through. Oh, I should mention, uh, accompanied with that uh, almost paralyzation was a feeling of deep, deep cold entering your bones, and that's what, what was slowing you down. That was probably a key thing. <laughs> okay. Cold in bones. Um, Continue, though, sorry. couple questions, a couple questions. One, these footmen, are they... Aside from the weapons, donning identical gear, or are they all individual? Uh, they are all. Um, they are all uh, uniform. They are all the same. They appear to be the same lightness, right? Of like okay. sort of ar- like armored, uh, <laughs> armored men, but with faces revealed. They just appear to be young, sort of generically good-looking men, basically staring outwards, straight ahead. Uh, but they, Dish. but but they do not appear to be individuals. They appear to be like the same thing replicated, okay. except for except for what is in their hands. Um, I'm just trying to I'm trying to figure if seeing feeling what I just felt and seeing stone figures holding weapons, if I would have any capacity to suspect that there's a correlation between the two things. Not that there is, but right, like as a player, I'm suspicious of it. But I don't know if that's like a fair. You mean like a group of petrified people that are just put on pedestals, kind of thing? As or, a... or just that petrification in general is, you know, like there's a relationship between because they have normal weapons, right? So do, what I'm immediately do, going is like, oh, are they going to attack us? Right. Like, these guys look look surprised. Like, are, are these obviously carved statues, or do these look like petrified people? 
the, are all the good question. No, they, they 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 look like they're uniform and that they're exactly the same and they're just at attention, staring straight forward. But each of them in the right hand, and the right hand is always in the same position, but they're all holding holding vastly different weapons. I can describe the weapons if you enter the room and sort of investigate. Yeah, yeah. That, that would definitely catch my eye. You go into the room. Are you sure? I'm, I'm not going into the room. <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm, I'm just asking I'm, if you want I'm to. eyeing that silver mirror behind me and wondering how quick I can run to it personally. But, Halifax, please, go. Mold what the hell, man? It looks cool. There are yeah. guys there and they've got weapons. Yeah. I'm going yeah, in. Cool. Okay. I can have roll to spell magic. All right. So just be aware that the, that the walls are covered with this yellow-purple fuzz. Okay. Actually, speaking of, that was also on the candles and stuff. Yeah, right it was a, it was a different it was a different sort of mold, but it was like a yellow mold. This is sort of you can oh. tell it, it's it's a, akin to it, but probably a different species. Okay, I have a question really in relation to, to this. Uh, does it did when we watched the mold sort of like disperse off of those objects in the first room? Uh huh. Did it seem like it could have been inhaled. Uh yeah, of course it's a, yeah there's spores. spores. Yeah. yeah. Have mold uh, it, but it, mm -hmm. I think I might. Uh, Piece of my, you know, tunic, and do a quick like mask. Look at the mask, you know. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah. I just want to like veil my my ability to breathe a bit. Sure. You know what? This is more not. It's a really good. I, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take that blindfold. I was wearing. I'm gonna like shift it down. Nice. <laughs> okay. okay. Right on. My own in '95, yeah. baby. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna that scarf that Ted bought me. Modern times invade the D and D game they were playing. <laughs> Everyone masks up. <laughs> There's like a sign outside that says six feet between us. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so you um you enter into the room. So you notice first of all that the floor does not appear to be covered with mold. So there's no chances. It appears that as long as you don't disturb the walls that the uh, that the mold is going to sit where it is. But you enter in, you expect the worst. Nothing seems to happen though. And um so what you see here um as far as the weapons go is I'm not going to detail like which statue and which location is carrying which weapon because I'm going to tell you straight off that it doesn't matter because I, I don't feel like tracking like which weapon does. So it, I'm just letting you know that I'm just going to give you the summation of what these weapons are, but uh, one equal equal statue is carrying each one. Okay, it doesn't really matter where they are in the room. All right, so what we have here, um, seven weapons. You have a, um, a flanged mace uh, with a spiraling hilt. Okay. Um, a morning star with two inch long spikes on the ball of it. A battle axe, uh, which is engraved with a horse's head. Um, but this is like a, like a legit battle axe, not like a fantasy battle axe that's like two bladed sort of thing. This is like an actual battle axe with a single head, but meant, meant for killing rather than chopping wood, right? Um, so it's engraved with a horse's head. Um, there is a Warhammer, once again, an actual Warhammer, and not a Final Fantasy VII Warhammer. Um, uh, this is uh, with the head that's shaped like a boar. Um, there is a halberd that has a moldy pennant that's sort of draped listlessly uh, along the pole. Can't really t tell what it's meant to depict. Um, and there is a spear... And the spear actually has a, uh, the, the spear tip is actually a serrated blade along the sides. Um, and lastly, there is a long sword. The long sword, uh, uh, they, they all look like relatively like unique weapons. The long sword stands out though. It has, um, it ha the, the blood groove down the center of it is actually wavy. Right? It's not like a straight line down the blade. It actually waves down the middle. Um, and, uh, it is fairly obvious that it is of um, superior make, like very, very fine. John, um, Halifax's eyes get really big. I I <laughs> John, I, just because there are like pretty specific identifiers on these weapons, mm -hmm. uh, would we have any sort of awareness? mythologically or spiritually that these weapons would relate to um, characters, right? Like like individuals. Well, the only one that kind of stands out, the only one that kind of in your mind is that uh, of the, uh, the two or three depictions that you've seen so far of Sir Chide and read about Alfric, the same sort of thing is that he was, he wielded a sword in battle. You know, you saw the mosaic, he was piercing the heart of a fairy lord with a sword sort of thing. Um, but there's no reference to um, the other weapons, not only 
is there no reference in the legends to the types of weapons, but also those unique descriptions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alfred could tell you that from what the research he did at the Institute about this, the legend. And, uh, oh yeah, there's there's a there's about zero chance that he's not going to go for that sword, but uh, <laughs> know that we would want to like check the rest of the room out. Is there another door? Is there another way out of this room? Yes, there's a door in the uh, along the northern wall on the western side of the door, like the the, the western portion of the northern wall. You said it was a small wooden door. A small wooden door. That's correct. Yeah. Also, we, which we which are which that behind. Sorry. That mirrors the small wooden door that was in the Chapel of St. Sedge, which you did not go through either. Oh, you're right. We didn't. I forgot. Okay, mm -hmm. so, and the other thing we know then is that it's not unlikely, I'll say this, well, uh, I bet there's a door hidden behind that tabard as well, as there was on the other side. If, if, if everything is symmetrical, it only makes but sense. I'm a little worried yeah. that uh, this mold might be... Uh, Toxic. Yep. Yeah. So to be to be clear, because you might be misinterpreting, um, the at the Chapel Saint said you did indeed come through a tapestry in order to enter that, and that is there is something on the mirrored wall on the eastern wall here, but it is a mural, not a tapestry. Oh. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and can't see it because of the dust, the mold. The mold. It's not clear what it is. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, can we see get a better picture of the the um, mosaic on the wall? What about it? You guys come in too. All the way in the room. Can we see the art on the wall any better? Uh, no, you can just you can tell it is art of some sort, but it is it is very heavily obscured by the yellow and purple mold. I'm not touching that shit. What? Never uh, <laughs> this mold in any D and D game ever. It never happened. Uh -huh. what, if, what if what if we do this? Like we we've um, got our we've got our we've got our masks on. Right. Turn goes by. Um, what if we fix um, some of our bedding or something onto the end of our ten foot pole? Mm. Start at the farthest corner. Like you guys stand back in the hallway. Start at the farthest corner. Rub like a a corner of it. The ten foot pole, ready to drop it and and leave as soon as like hold your breath. Mess with it and run and see what happens. Or I got ten feet. feet feet, holding my breath, wearing a mask. You all hear, you, you you see the door to the north slowly open. Oh, shit. Hello. It opens up, and you see two figures float into the room before you, and then as you take a step back in alarm, you see that they are the two skeletons. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> As they come into the room and they start dancing around, they get, they get dangerously close to the mold on the walls, brushing up against the statues and the in the mural as well. Um, and they kind of circle around you and sort of dance around you. And they're like, come join our dance. Who would we, who would we be dancing with? Why with us, of Why course. Ivory friends. Your, and your names are? I am... Okay. It's only polite to share. So the one wearing the pearl necklace is, I am Lady Amaranda, she says, as like her, her neck like swivels. Uh, I mean, her, her head sort of stays in the same position looking at you as she swivels around, you know what I mean? The Lady Amaranda. And this is, my dear, of course, I can introduce myself. I am the Lord Brig Forwith. <laughs> Brig Forwith. A strong <laughs> name, to be sure. Indeed. Um, Is people jingling any jangles in my history class? Uh, indeed, <laughs> Elfric, it does. Researching the 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 history of Sir Chide, uh, it, it takes you a while to kind of, and you're like, because it was just a passing thing that you didn't take note of, because you were more interested in like the tomb and like the history of Sir Chide himself. But this appears to be his mother and father, or the names, the names at least of his mother and father. Awesome. And I your latest that. information. Sorry, go ahead. I bow to them, and I go, would you be the lady and lord who are the the mother and father of uh, Sir Chide? Indeed we are. We dance eternally. Come join us. How proud you must be of your son and his amazing accomplishments. We are content to dance for eternity hmm. and guarding What's... the tomb of our dear child. And guarding the tomb? Did they use the word guarding? Mm -hmm. so... Uh, uh, what, uh, 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 what inspired you to start this dance? I, I 
this, you know. <laughs> what makes your feet move? We, <laughs> what, <laughs> we've always danced. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And they're, to be clear, like they're floating too, so like their feet sort of dangle, like their little phalanges are sort of like dangling, dangling like, you know. Effects. I was just about to clean some of this mold. Um, I'd be worried about that. They, they, they don't even, they, they don't even react. They're just, boom, okay. dum, 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 dum. and it, they appear to be, as you don't show really any interest in dancing, particularly, they, they start to move towards the southern uh, exit out the way that you came towards the mirror room. Go through the northern door. All right, they're going to exit the room. They boom, 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 and they move Great, out the southern. Door while they're while they're off, yeah. tripping the lights. Let's go peek our peek our head through there. Is there any movement on these statues? Is there anything going on as we move through the room? No. Nope. Never aware. No. Nope. All right. So. Uh, yeah, it's that sword. Sticky fingers. We are going to go to the door and be ready to shut it. Okay, so um, so I, I, I'll go back to it because I should have said this. When they, when they entered the door, um, when they entered through that door, the mold that was on that door actually kind of bursts, like, and the spores go out. And they go, it appears to um, that they burst out in, like, a 10-foot wide circle, like, douche, like that. Poof, poof, poof. And now you guys were standing well back from that. You were investigating the mural. Oh, um, actually, having but, seen that? Yeah. I'm sorry. We, I'm just saying, like, you can certainly go through the door if you want because the spores have dis since dispersed. We see about how long that takes for that stuff to settle. Uh, yeah, it's uh, not that long, like seconds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, having seen that, uh, can I? I'm just going to become the man of many stones. Are there, are there any pebbles on the ground that I can throw at this mural sure. on the wall? Sure, absolutely. Can be, before we do that, though, can we just take a quick break so I can uh, I can go wee wee to the little boys' room? I'm gonna go make a PP too. All right, right on. Okay. <laughs> we will be right back. Okay, and we're back. All right, so uh, Snell, you were going to use a stone for another thing. Oh yes, I was trying to see if I could uh, disrupt the pores upon the muralled wall. Now that we've watched it happen on the door, and see if they disperse. Okay, so where is everyone positioned then in the room? I would like to step like away from where he's throwing that rock towards the <laughs> southern, <enough>. yes, towards, <laughs> towards the southern chamber as far as I can manage and still f up. Okay, got it. Cool. All right. Yeah. So you you do you it, it hits the wall and like a big poof poof uh, poofs out. Um, you can see it didn't uh, it didn't um, it didn't uh, disperse like the entire length of the mural, um, but it does disperse enough that you can see that there. Um, uh, it appears to have uh, revealed a section of the mural that is depicting what appears to be horses' legs, and at the at the horses' feet um, are two hunting hounds. Could we try to um, duplicate this effort to clear off the rest of that? Sure. What would you like to use? Well, I could, I've got I've got an idea I've got an idea to take um, uh, a large sack mm -hmm. and uh, throw some stuff in there um, I feel like my, my water skin because that's soft right so sure. I'm gonna take my sack put a water skin in it uh -huh. at the end on my rope that I can uh, throw that so it'll be bigger and softer so I'm not gonna damage the thing yeah but then I can throw it and then pull it back with my rope and then throw it and pull it back with my okay, rope. Okay, I dig that. To clear this stuff off. I will say uh, the whole process will take a turn. Are you okay with that? Yeah. I'm keeping an eye out for these dancing skeletons while this is happening. Okay. All right, so, uh, yeah, after a turn, you're you're able to... It, like, the whole room is filled, basically, with, like, spores at, at, at a certain point. Like, poof, 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 as they kind of go all over the place. But eventually, um, it settles down, and you can, it reveals the mural in all its glory. Um, it is quite faded, in general. But it's clear that um, what you're seeing here is Sir Chide, once again, dressed in full battle armor. Um, he's on horseback. Uh, and... Uh, in his right sword, in his right hand, you can see that he's wielding over his head. He's wielding a longsword, and it's clear that that longsword is depicted with wavy blood grooves down the center of it. Wow! 
and the sword itself is actually surrounded with a white glow. It's been depicted, depicted in that manner. He's on top of Hound, and he um, and he is charging against what appears to be a uh, an army made of fairies that are actually arrayed against the knight, like elves basically that are arrayed against him. Okay, and at his uh, at his feet um, are two hounds, and you can see that uh, one of them is wearing a collar, and you can see that you can see uh, the name of the hound on that collar, and its name is Cater. C H E D R looks like cheddar, sort of. Old cheddar. Now you probably remember, and for the viewers maybe as well from the past episode, that you learned the other dog's name, right? A flake. Do we remember this? Flager. Yeah. Flager. 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 Yeah. You found that bra- that you found that uh, that pastoral poem about Sir Chide within the. Um, uh, the, on the brass sheet that was in that moldy book, remember? We still have that. And it had the it had the name of one of the dogs. So you have Flager and Hater. Um, does, does there once... seem to be? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. Here we go. I was going to say, does there seem to be any um, relation, like the figures that are in the statues? Do they also seem to be in the mural in any way? No. No, it, it, it's it's a definitely a stylized, unrealistic depiction of Sir Chide basically single-handedly facing off a, uh, an army of fairy knights. Does the mural depict any fairy champions or anything like that? No, they all appear to be face no, no, not faceless, but just sort of generic elf fairies. You know, it's like he's very it's clearly like depicted. It's like it's like him and his known horse and his two known hounds against like the faceless hordes of the fairy. You know, sort of thing. You know, he's on the left side and they're on the right side, and you know, you know. Um. Just as the pores have settled, and it seems, when it seems safe, I get closer to the mural and sort of search for any grooves. Again, look at written passages or anything sure. that's sort of untoward. Yep, it'll take a turn to thoroughly do it. Yeah. You're okay with it? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Well, while he's doing that, um, I would like to take that same turn mm-hmm. to look very carefully at the, uh, the statue that's holding the sword to look and see you know examine it closely has it uh is it covered in the same layer of dust as everything do there seem to be any you know, levers like would the arm move if i took the sword you know like really, really is this is this purely it? visual or are you feeling around for hidden stuff uh i guess i'm not yeah uh, he'd feel around for hidden stuff <laughs> <laughs> don't let me force you, Matt. <laughs> what have I done? Like, wait, don't touch it before. Hold on. <laughs> All right, I'm so just like I know he would. Yeah, uh, he's doing the jump. Well, yeah. He's setting off my trap, just so you know where I am. I'm going to be at that northern door. Mm-hmm. Listen. Okay, so the door is open. So uh, let's start with you first, Alfred. Then we'll go backwards. Alfred, um, you can see that uh, the door is open. And uh, are you carrying a lantern? Uh, yeah, I'm the one with the lantern on the end of Right, yeah, okay, so you can see that um, there is a dusty stone corridor that uh, goes directly north from where you are. Uh, it goes for 15 feet and then turns left at a 90 degree angle. Okay. Uh, but that's all you see. It, it, but it is, du- it is dust covered, does not appear that it has been used in some time. That's it. And you don't hear anything at all. Okay, except okay. for floating some yeah. okay. um, Also, seems to be uh, there. Is, it is dusty and dirty, but does seem to be devoid of um, of mold. Uh, oh, good. And the dampness that has so far pervaded a lot of uh, the the tomb that you've been in so far is, appears to be relatively absent here. It's like a markedly drier. Halifax. Uh, the the, um, the statue. Um, you do not find anything. Uh, t- uh, you do see though, as you're kind of feeling around and um, you're checking like the grip of the guy's hand uh, on the sword, that it would be uh, a small, trivial thing to actually pull the blade out of his grip. Okay, I'm uh, not going to do that until uh, finish with uh, what it, what uh, Snell was doing with the mirror. Okay, and so at the same time, Snell, you're searching the mural, and uh, unfortunately, you do not uh, see anything that appears to be strange or out of place. Before you pull the sword, Halifax, one other thing that just piqued my interest among the weapons was that on the uh, halberd was a pendant. Covered in mold. Covered in mold. 
is there a way that we can replicate our process here so that we might be able to look at that pendant? Get clean uh, from a distance? Yeah. Is that something you guys would want to do? I think I, I just like so sure, all this there's all this familial context here, and we have a we have a locket or a pendant here, so I don't know. It's like might be worth looking at it. Yeah, I was curious uh, about that too. Did you say pendant or pendant? Pennant, pennant, a flag oh, hanging from the halberd. Okay. Yeah. okay. So what are you doing? Um, Want to like I, I, get the spores off it and see what the flags. Uh, from a distance, the same way we've been doing it. I can use my my my, my rope sack. Sure. Yeah. So when you when you uh, you kind of get rid of the mold and then you pull out the pennant, you can see that it is um, faded beyond repair um, and that is indeterminate. It looks like it was once you know fully colored in detail, but it's like a rag now, basically. I'll say that w that won't take a turn. That's just you just do that. Um, do your thing, Matt. Okay. Yeah. Maybe do you over by my door? Or you for Matt does that? I'm gonna. I guess I'm gonna go over to Alfred and sort of brace in yeah. preparation. I'm going to uh, uh, shield in one arm, mm -hmm. uh, open hand with the other one to take to take the sword. I'm going to walk up to the knight and um, or you know the character holding it, and I'm just like I'm saying, um, I am here to take on uh, Sir Chide's mantle and continue his work, with pure heart and noble purpose. I reach up and I, I uh, eat the sword. All right, so it, it does that dramatic sort of shing as you kind of take it out after you speak those words. Um, and you can immediately, as you grip it and take it out, you can feel that there is power surging through the blade, that this thing is heavily enchanted, very powerful, very old. Um, and uh, it actually... Uh, uh, it, it gives you a sense of, like, that you can't be defeated in battle well, i had that already yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um uh, yeah, it, a cherub almost took me out but you know still I'm like that glum, right? <laughs> there's a there's a compulsion uh that kind of surges through the blade and into you that sort of uh makes you want to um uh that you can that you can fight anything right that you can defeat with this blade in your hand nothing is too uh you know even Butterbones the giant. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, yes. How many how many mystical forces can uh, uh, <laughs> infect poor Halifax's brain? <laughs> John, what do I have to go do now? <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, compulsion was the wrong word. I should say. Um, Love it. All right, right. So I I will I will um, you know, take the blade and like you know give that kind of cool like above my face salute. Mm -hmm. uh, the night. I don't yeah. want. I don't want to. I don't want to leave him unarmed. I, I give him my old one. Okay. Cool. So yeah, you place that in its grip. If you get killed with your own sword, I just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, nothing <laughs> happens. Be the greatest thing. Nothing happens. It's the noble and honorable thing to do, man. <laughs> Steal. It's just a trade. Now at the end, just be like, no trade backs, and run out the door. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. uh I, I, I'm tempted by minutes. the other weapons, but I think maybe that'll be when we're on our way out that I'll, I'll mess with anything else. Mm -hmm. For now, I'm going to leave them. Something um, tells me Argus, Argus may have an eye for that uh, serrated spear. Don't forget, I just want to point oh, out, too, I that... Say, I kind of wanted that, too, yeah. Looking at the uh, the Hound uh, and the name of the Hound as well, that you you recall that way back whenever you were first inspecting the, the strange slime hole thing that you entered into, that you heard the baying of hounds somewhere down in the tomb. I just want to point that out again. That's right. And meanwhile, there's an empty plinth that probably contained a statue of Sir Chide wandering around down here, too. So what do you do now? So you have the oh, the open quarter that Elfric reports back uh, is 15 feet long and turns to the left. Um, uh, you've got the strange floating candles at the base of the two stairways down there. Lead on. You've got I like, the... I like, let's, go to, let's go north. You've also got the, the the fisher room too, right? With the caskets and stuff like that, right? Lots of it. Why are you going down this corridor that's right here? Yeah, I'll see that first. What you're doing? Okay, cool. So you slowly move. Going first. Who's going first? Going in. I, I will go. I will go first. I've got the. Got so, the. Halifax, Alfred, and Snell. I assume that's the order. 
No. Yes. Elfric in the middle? Or I just wizard assume... sandwich. Yeah, wizard wizard sandwich, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that's also good because you've got the, the lantern on a on a stick. Lantern yeah, on a stick. I left on that lantern, Johnny. Uh you've got eight more turns left. Okay, let's do this. Okay, you move forward. Fifteen feet, you can see that it turns uh ninety degrees to the west. Um and when you uh uh, when Elfric's lantern light goes over Halifax's shoulder, you can see that it, uh, it goes 10 feet uh, to the west down that corridor, 5 feet wide once again, then opens up into a quite large chamber. Um, uh, you can see directly in front of you at the edge of your lantern light, basically, that there is a, uh, a pillar um, that directly in front of you in the center of this room, um, but that it, is, it appears to be one of many that sort of line the room from north to west. I mean, uh, northwest, from north to south. Um, uh, yes, and that it, that the uh, each of these pillars actually has relief carvings of some sort that you can't quite make out here. So it appears that you're entering from the middle of the eastern wall of this chamber, um, and that a mirrored corridor is directly in front of you behind the pillar that heads out the western side of that wall, right? But unless you enter the room, I can't give you the full dimensions. Doesn't appear to be anything moving. You don't hear yeah, anything. We hear anything? Okay. Yeah. Um, let's inch forward. Okay, you inch forward into the room and you're in the room proper. Once again, you've entered into this, the center of the eastern wall. The dimensions of the room appear to be uh, 15 feet from east to west and 30 feet north to south. And there are four equally spaced pillars every five feet directly in the middle of the room. Understand? How big are the diameter of the pillars? Uh, roughly about three feet, I would say. Now, each of the carvings, uh, each of the pillars has these relief carvings, and they depict scenes of what are obviously like holy war against fairies. So these are like the armies of mortals uh, uh, fighting against uh, fairies. It's very much like a Trajan's column sort of thing, right? Like spiraling yeah. relief carvings uh, up the wall, up the uh, up the pillars on all four of them. You can see to the south that there is a double doors. Um, uh, and to the north, in the middle of the wall, there are also double doors. But based upon the direction that you came in, you can see that there are two niches that are on either side of those double doors, one niche to the west, one to the east. And coming from the, the center of those doors are massive iron chains that go into each of those niches. At the edge of your lantern light, you can see what looks uh, to be a terrifying uh, uh, muzzled uh, maw of a of a uh, of a hound with its lips pulled back in a snarl and it's at the very edge of your lantern right light right it's sort of like behind one of the pillars that you can sort of see this like tucked into that niche and it makes you kind of start at for a second because it's so vicious looking it's sort of like grand right it's like grand grand like that you know but uh, uh, and you're only seeing like the the just the snout of it, right? Kind of peering out of the darkness. Do you remember that that, that terrifying scene when you were a kid from the Neverending Story of the Gamork? One of my favorites, yeah. The Gamork, like coming out of that fucking hole in the wall. It's like that, you know what I mean? But but stone, you know? Yeah. And the chain, the chain goes off into that niche. It looks like it probably connects to the to that stone hound somewhere in the darkness. And then there's another chain that goes off into the niche that's uh, to the east. Uh, along the wall, which you can't see because you're coming out of that eastern wall. What, what Does that all make sense? <laughs> the chains, the, the ch one end of the chain is on the, the dog thing. It's the other end? Uh, attached to the actual uh, one of the double doors, right? So there's two equal. There's two chains on either one of the doors, going off into those two niches, right? And you're no, looking. You're looking at all this to your right, right, which is the north. Is there a lot of slack in those chains, like. Something were chained up there. Could it? Is there enough slack that it could come get us? There is slack, so they're sort of drooping, but not enough that the chains are actually like pulled on the floor. They're sort of like hanging in midair, right? But there is like a droop. Go fight a tough guy. 
and once again, there is a passageway that leads directly to the west, a across from you, directly across from you, from the middle of the western. Nothing, nothing to the south? There's a double doors to the south. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So those presumably open into the fissure chamber, I would guess. The western chamber goes to, if it's symmetrical, uh, the Saint uh, Sage uh, yeah. thing. All right. Well, we have some boss doors to the north of us. <laughs> um, what? What's you? You said that there are carvings and stuff on the on the columns. Yeah. The, the take a look at those. Yeah, scenes of holy war against fairies, marching up, yeah. marching up in a spiral fashion, basically showing like a chronological history of the fight against the cold prince, right, and his armies. Um, you you also see that on the double doors where the chains are coming out of that there is um, some sort of inscription which you'd have to move up to it to kind of see. You guys want to um, go ahead and go north, go south, and open up the fissure room from the other side. That could be. If yeah. we can maybe make sure we have an exit, if we need. Although, to. if the dancers see you they might decide that we violated the tomb and might decide to come after us they are guarding the tomb right but the dancers are moving around it seems like right i don't know they've if definitely they're static kind of... or if they're sort of uh, in multiple places at once or if they're patrolling um if they the doors are closed then they didn't open the doors they would have had to have come through here though to get through the other way to circle around True. East, True. John, do, do the doors to the south look? They've been open. Like if we look at the 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 floor, is the dust disturbed where those double doors they are opened? Or? Mm -hmm. They sure are. Okay. Well, there we have it. Do we want to maybe take a peek and lock those doors? Like if we don't want those skeletons coming up behind us, we could take a spike and like push those doors closed. Yeah. I don't know. So I'm still wondering about using that mirror. Not that it'll do anything, but I'm just a mobile, like whirling dervish. This makes me scared. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially since they can go south again and come around, right? Like, I think that's a good idea with the spike. I'm just wondering if we should. I have concerns um, about shutting down any egress that we might have. Do yeah, we want to look? Fine. Do we want to look through that other hallway then and see if it really does link all the way through? Yeah. Okay, so you just cross the you cross the room, yeah. circling around the pillar, and you check out that western corridor. Is there is there any as we as we cross? I'm going to look north and watch, see if there's any movement of those chains. There's no movement, but as you look back over your shoulder towards the north, you can see that indeed the other chain that does appear to be attached to a similar hound statue, snarling out of the darkness in the eastern niche. To be clear, is the chain stone or metal? The chain the chain is metal, iron. Yeah, um, and you enter the western corridor, and I'll uh, I'll just tell you right now, like you you know briefly, you can you can um, confirm that it does indeed mirror the exact passageway to the to the east, um, and there it ends at a stone door. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm sorry, a, a wooden door. Cool. So uh, so we have we have an easy clear. I mean, there might who knows if the worms come back, but. We have a clear out then. That's our quickest escape is back up through the rope we came down. In. Yeah, so the west, if things could really go to shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. When? The way to run. <laughs> can you guys, um, if you, if those of you who have been mapping, can you hold up your map to the camera? Uh, mine's really mine shaky, looks, but mine looks ugly, of... yeah. <laughs> They're all, I think Matt's is much better than mine. There you go. Up here. Yeah, yeah. This is our okay. Okay. Right here. Yeah. Yep. It's very good. Both of yours. Pretty, pretty awesome. Good job, Mike. Mike Mike does it by magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all in here, man. That's it's all right. in here. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, okay, just to, taking account real quick, let's do it. I mean, quick inventory, right? We have uh, the stairs going downward into the, the wet, pristine area. Uh, we have the fissure room, right, with two open sarcophagi or two... Uh, 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 Coffers. Yeah, coffers. And three, they're closed. Uh, and then the, the double doors ahead of us with the uh, death, death dogs waiting to yeah. chop our heads off. There is an inscription on those doors that you have yet to investigate. Uh, more than once. Yeah. Go investigate the uh, inscription. Yeah. We, we, we should. Let me go, I'm going to go with you. <laughs> okay, thank you. You can go in front of me. 
We'll Please. go in front of our <laughs> of our squishy boy. You may precede me. <laughs> as far as I can on my staff, John, I'm gonna go try and get as uh, the bare minimum distance that I need to be to be able to read it. Okay, cool. Yep. So uh, we'll as you the shield shield up. You you have to approach you have to approach it you know pr pr pretty close but uh, uh, enough that your lantern would uh, illuminate what appears to be larger than life depiction uh, stone hounds like they're uh, the, the hounds themselves at the shoulder are about six feet tall like massive beasts you know um, uh, looking extremely fearsome and uh, now you can see that the chains actually end um, hooked onto like massive iron collars uh, that have been uh, welded onto the stone they look uh, like the collars the guys with the dogs were wearing in the they do yep although they do not appear to be labeled with names or anything like that now on the doors themselves um uh, deeply cut inscribed into the doors uh is a, an inscription that says in old wardish and it says call to the companions oh okay we have their names Adar, Flega. good doggies uh, Snell calls out the names of the two hounds and the doors <laughs> and they slowly open. Look to the left and I look to the right. The dog's about to eat my face off. No, you're not. They stay still. Double hand push. I'm getting, very, I'm getting very like Cerberus at the gates of hell vibes right now, guys. So... <laughs> like... Good boys. Good boys. <laughs> Stay. So they open up, and uh, your lantern light shines into a huge circular chamber, approximately 15, about uh, 25 feet diameter. Um, and in the center of which is a large stone coffer. And on the far side, so directly in front of you, 25 feet over that coffer on the far wall, is a um, a pale azure, like like pale blue, semi transform, uh, semi transparent form, like a human form, uh, armored and thin and drawn with age, um, and he's kneeling before a portrait, so his back is to you. So um, basically, picture like a ghostly version of the knight from Last Crusade, no, right? It like looks just like that, except it's a, it's like a ghostly form, and he's kneeling and he has his hands before his face and he's praying upwards at this portrait that's uh, on this far wall, twenty five feet ahead. Um, and the portrait appears to be now once again it's pretty far ahead, but um, it is unmistakable as a fair maiden, long flowing blonde hair and a white robe. And upon her brow, a star, right? Um, and uh, she is appears to be standing amidst a stone circle, a circle of dolmens. Um, and uh, he, so the ghost sort of rises up, kind of picks himself up off of his knees, and he turns towards you with a sad, drawn face with a long beard, you know, and he kind of looks at you and over his his own tomb you know it's obviously like the aged form of sir chide and he says ah visitors welcome he says and he holds up like a mailed hand Oof. Ow. Uh, hail and uh well met Child, I, I presume. Your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you wanted to tell him that you're here. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, your girlfriend sent me. Uh, Halifax, yeah. you may be a, a ghostly visage praying before a portrait <laughs> for too long. So. What are you talking about, man? Hey. Uh, a tale as old as time over here. Yeah, exactly. Hey, so, uh, what do you what do you say to him? What, what do you say? Um, uh, yeah, so I. I I would I literally say that, like, uh, hail and uh, well met, good, uh, good Sir Chai. Uh, we have come, uh, come to seek you. For what purpose do you disturb my contemplation of my true love? And um, I would uh, gesture to the painting, and I w I'd say. 
At her bidding. At her bidding, I am here. Is it the same person, dude? It's it's to Halifax. It, it looks, appears to be exactly the same person. That, yeah. The description yeah. that you gave is ab absolutely her. I'm like. She has visited absolutely. you. She calls to you, as she calls to me. This is well. It is fortuitous for, in the state that I am in, I can never, I cannot be with her. But should you take my ring? and bring it to her. We will be reunited for all eternity. I need living people to do this for me. Will you do me this task? This is, this is what she has asked of me. Of, 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 of course I will do this. Thought of nothing else since I've seen her, but bringing her ring? Yes, the ring that we were betrothed with. I see also that you bear my blade. He, yeah, he, he'd, he'd take it up. Uh, yes. I can I, wield it no longer. You may have it as long as you wield it nobly and for just causes. I shall, I shall do all that I can to do. He'll, he'll kind of like bow to him. Then open my coffer. And take what is within. He says, and he gestures to the, the, the you know, the the coffin, the coffin in front of you. You kind of, you're kind of speaking over like the coffin, right? Like you're on one side, he's on the other. You can see that the coffer itself um, is uh, carved, uh, and it, it has a, on the top of it, like the lid is basically like a likeness of Sir Chide, um, with leaf patterns surrounding him. So it's very much like that medieval knight's sort of sarcophagus right like where it's like a depiction of like the full body with a sword in the middle um yeah closed okay i'm gonna i'm gonna walk up to shove the lid off <laughs> okay does he does he react at all like uh he he approaches the top of it the head of it and um he sort of peers sadly within it's actually kind of a very sort of poignant moment as you see like it within like he's uh, he's a ghost, so he doesn't like rest his his hands on that thing or other. But he sort of peers in, and sort of just sort of looks sadly at his own uh, remains, and it's like the the skeleton of a knight uh, is within. Um, now, uh, he is. Uh, the, there are there, like the rusted remains of like mail, obviously useless. They, they serve no purpose basically now that are collapsed upon the scale on the bones itself. Um, the jaw is sort of like wrenched to the side a little bit from just gravity, basically pulling, you know, just, you know, to the side. Um, and, uh, uh, but upon its, so he's in the middle, he has his hands sort of clasped like this. Um, on its, the wrists, there are a pair of copper bracelets that are sort of dangling loose over the bones. Um, and the copper bracelets themselves are engraved with owls. The eyes of these owls are amethysts. Mm. Pretty nice looking. And then you see that on his left hand, on his ring finger, there is a bronze band. Finally, you have found what you have uh, been t uh, told to get and, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, uh, foretold to get basically uh, uh this uh, the bronze the, the famed bronze ring and you can see that it is uh it is set with uh moonstone on the top of it and the fittings are of woven branches which seem similar to the branches that um uh of the archway that led down in those two those two passageways those two stairways are going down um halifax you feel your quest um like you can feel something like lock into place you're like you know, like a moment has happened here, you know, like, like you achieve something like the next step in the quest sort of thing, you know, very obvious to you. I, I look up at him um, with kind of like, sorry, dude, in my, in my face. I reach down to his skeletal finger and I try to like split off without... Yep. Without breaking it. Yeah, you don't break it, but it is like a little disturbing <laughs> as you sort of like pull it because it's, you know, it's like hanging loosely around the phalange itself. So you like you kind of pull it off and it's just sort of like clack clack and it sort of rests against this thing and drop. drop. And he looks um, as you sort of raise the ring up, you know, his eyes sort of follow it up and he looks with like, you know, reverence at it. And he says, take that and bring it to my beloved. 
so that I may join her for eternity. Please do this for me, so I may have my final rest. Where, but where, where is she? She is in the realm of fairy, trapped by her father in some forgotten corner of Phrygia, his dread realm. The stairways down will take you there. Be on your god, for there's mischief in all corners of fairy. But I assure you that my lady love lies at the other end of your journey. I'm not doing it justice, but he speaks in a very antiquated accent. John, your old woldish sucks, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I didn't, I didn't bone up on old woldish. You can polish that up for yeah. next time. We'd all really. If, was, I was, if I was a super good DM, I'd be speaking Anglo-Saxon right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You like listening to Chaucer. All right, so hey, uh, if my if lord knight. Need... Oh, go ahead, Matt. Uh, the the one question I have, he, I would look to I would look to my companions then, and I'd say. Uh, my way is clear. I'm. I know that I must do this, and I will. Um, worry for my companions. Will a will we be able to return? If we this journey. I won't ask them to come if they if they will not be able to. I will not dissemble. The paths of fairy are dangerous to tread upon. But should you complete this journey and give the ring to my beloved, she will surely reward you with safe passage back. Can I ask, um... When we retrieved your noble sword, we saw the weapons of many other warriors who, uh, by chance, assisted you on your own journey. Uh... For us to assist noble Halifax here, would it be okay for us to bring those with us? Indeed, it would be, as you say, okay. <laughs> it would be totally rad should you do that. Questions, fucko. Okay, well, we have a lot of questions. <laughs> but just one more from me. Of your, of your, of your uh, dedicated parents uh, who dance outside this chamber. Uh, uh, he looks confused. He's like, my parents dance. They should be resting in the sarcophagi. They are not. Oh, that's the two. Okay, that all makes sense. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, it appears as if they have been disturbed from their rest, and who are the scoundrels that did this? Endless waltz along uh, uh, this 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 chamber. I said, "What could we do to assist in uh, freeing them of this?" Do you know? I do not. I do not know of the circumstances upon uh, whereupon this would have occurred. Tomb robbers, perhaps, who have disturbed them. And of your other family members, are they entombed along with your parents? Indeed. In the nearby. Yeah. Okay. In the crypt uh, to the south. Yeah. <laughs> okay, as I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I let the the mage talk. I guess. Okay. Nerd, <laughs> nerd, nerd, nerd. <laughs> okay. Like, no. Raising his hand, Sir Child. <laughs> <laughs> I roll my yeah, eyes. What have you, Shut sorcerer? Up. My lord knight, I have to know. You have been touted, and the legend speaks of your war against the the, the Frost Prince and all of Fairy. How did this? How did your lady love be of Fairy? What do you mean? Like I, I don't quite understand. I don't. I don't understand the question. I'm trying to ask how a guy who's known for slaughtering like elves and fairies by the boatload ended up marrying one. I oh. want to know. I oh yeah. Know. He's never been married, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, 
How is this? Okay? He sort of, you can see his like he kind of looks up at the ceiling like he's remembering things, and a small smile creeps across his face, and he says, "The who can explain the vicissit the vicissitudes of love? I met her That's it? in a beautiful. <laughs> I met her perchance in a beautiful glade, in one of the uh, one of the very few quiet moments during that awful war." And I was taken with her at first sight. And she, w I would like to think, with me. She didn't mind her father. It was, perhaps, I would li I like to think that perhaps God willed it. She, she didn't mind you fighting her father. Her father has, entra has, in has trapped her in his own realm. I do not think that she holds any love for him. Mm. At least that is what I like to think. <laughs> do these bracelets have any sentimental value? <laughs> <laughs> if you wish to have them, you may take them. Oh, I wow. have I have no more any, need for them. Is there any enchantment on them of any of any sort? Uh, yeah, me, me. not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> not that you yeah. without an soul, yeah exactly uh, yeah it's, it's very he's not you know he's he's a mythic figure he's not going to answer all these nitty-gritty fucking questions yeah 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 fair, 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 yeah fair, fair, fair. Fine, John. <laughs> it's not often you get to talk to an 800 year old dude yeah all right, i take the bracelets off of his body any like magic boots or anything cool in there too <laughs> <laughs> no you got the you have the copper uh, bracelets and the the ring yeah Okay. Um, All right. right. Before we leave, mm -hmm. uh, I want to take uh, one of those wafers uh, we have. Yep. Yeah. And put it in the mouth. Put it in his mouth and like set his jaw back. Okay. It's like, you know, like, kind of like giving he him. Sure. Yeah. I don't have last rites or anything, but it seems like a nice thing to do. Yeah, he's like help him rest. He doesn't say anything, but he smiles at you, and his eyes sort of crinkle. You know, you know that he appreciates the the blessing, the unspoken blessing. You know, um, and as you uh, assuming that you're kind of done talking to them, he sort of very much in the last crusade ways. You know, he sort of raises that hand. You know, farewell. God be with you on your journey. <laughs> um yeah cool uh are we uh, done speaking to the noble ghost yeah and we're still broke God, well God. we have a lot of magical weapons uh are they magic uh, uh, we, we i think back? i think so, they're face laying weapons probably. so this is it. We're, we're actually past time so it's actually a pretty pretty okay. perfect place to end it right so you can you All can right. you kind of can probably discuss what you guys want to do from this point forward um next time uh, but uh, this is like perfect, right? You met, you met with a knight. You've got the ring. You finally have the ring. Um, don't forget too that um, you you have some choices, right? Like once again, I mean, Halifax doesn't really, right? Like I mean, we we even even if Halifax wasn't put under the uh, the 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 quest spell, um, they probably want to do this for the knight. But um, don't forget that Mosselmeyer Druge, the consulting wizard back in Prigboard, is offering a very nice monetary reward which would translate directly not only into juicy gold but also into even juicier xp so do you do this what who do you you know you have to make that decision um and um uh yeah that's basically it yeah so just don't don't forget that the, those things have to be considered yeah what i'm gonna say that is that the undead don't pay they don't pay <laughs> <laughs> Honor pays, my friend. Honor pays. There's <laughs> um, the guy who got a nice new magic sword, and I got some big rats. Oh, pretty just throbbing with the power of eternity over here at Halifax. <laughs> 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 oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll discuss more next session. I, I, I don't know if we should disturb any of the other family members, but I think we have an understanding of what No, but it might be worthwhile stuff with parents back in the box. But I'm wondering, if we, see if we can't, yeah, yeah, put them to rest. Yeah. That might be nice. So, All right. Well, so that's something to think we'll about. Talk next about it next week. Right on. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so excellent work today, guys. Uh, thank you once again, everyone, for tuning in to episode ten. We're ten episodes done, which is pretty sweet. 
Uh, once again, uh, please uh, like, subscribe, get notifications, that whole jobby. You know the deal. Um, and we will see all of you guys next time. Thanks again for tuning in. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you, John.